Oh, good. Yeah. Now, you're in a uh, new film uh, called uh, Paul, Apostle of Christ. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. It comes out. When does it come out? Um, March 23rd. Okay. You, last time I saw you, you had, uh, you were still reeling from, you know, uh, the temptation, uh, not temptation of Christ, but uh, the, uh, passion, of the Christ. passion of Christ. Uh, and you were, you were still reeling from that. And you, I think you are one of the bravest men I think I've ever met. One of the most loyal men to God that I have ever met. Uh, and, uh, and I think, um, wrongfully persecuted for what you've, what you've done, the standards that you have taken. You've been very careful and very true when you, when you were in school, when we were there together, mm -hmm. uh, you made a promise to God. You, can you talk about that? I was given a gift and I... Um, I think it's very difficult for um, God to give certain people gifts because once they get the opportunity, it starts out being, you know, here, God, I'll give you all that. And, and it becomes, uh, you know, nine for you, one for me, and then eventually becomes nine for me, one for you. Yeah. So um, I just said that I would make the kind of films that would... Uh, um, you know, affect people's lives. Like, it, you know, it's a wonderful life. It, you know, when I met Jimmy Stewart, I was a waiter for him. And uh, I uh, was went and got him a drink and I was working at a party and they told me I couldn't, you know, speak to any of the celebrities. And I saw that guy and I thought, well, I could, you know, get fired for talking to him. So at the time I had applied to the U U.S. Naval Academy. I applied three different times and didn't get in. Mm -hmm. I had a shot at West Point and I told him, you know, I know that you've flew the liberators over Germany and he was just shocked that I knew uh, here I am, you know, mm -hmm. 19 years old, 20 years old. And I knew so much about him. And, um, I, I think that, um, I had Clooney told me one time, uh, George said that when they were at Rose, uh, he was with Rosemary, his aunt, and they were at Stewart's house and, on the TV was his Academy Award and Stewart said, you know, I wish I had done more. And, and here's a guy that made arguably one of the greatest films ever made. I watch it every year. It's a yeah. wonderful life. Yeah. And I, I wanted to have that kind of effect on uh, people, but I, it was always God through me that would make these films great. Is it true that you said, uh, I want to play you? No, I said, I don't want them to see me. I want them only to see you. And that became the difference. And to do that was on the cross. Yes, I felt um, the love that he had for me. But when I asked him to come closer like that, he said, you may not like what you're going to get. And I said, as long as they see you, that's all that matters. And what I felt was a broken heart because our Lord's not loved by most of his children. And, you know, I tell people, I know God loves you. And, and if you don't know that, then, you know, kind of live the life that, um, that makes people feel that. But those that say that, that, that have accepted that, you know, you know, just get up in the, in the morning and tell, uh, Jesus that you love him. He needs to hear that too. You are, you would have gotten along with Hollywood a long time ago with the Jimmy Stewart's of the world. Yeah. I think they were more like you. Right. Um, no, not so much. Not so much. Um, and yet you are, you are consistently amazing in every role I have ever seen you in. You are just you know, tremendous. Glenn, I've said this before. Um, the, the, the Hollywood at best, you know, if that really is the world, at best, it, it can only like you. Because the love, it, it does not come from man. It comes from God. So at best, Hollywood can like you, and I can prove it to you. When you go to the Academy Awards, mm. former winners are on the sideline. People are making over. It's over the the current winner, and, and you look some of the films and the substance that's coming out of them, and, you, and they're making all over that. People will give up everything for a red carpet. But the question you have to ask yourself 
is, do you want to be liked by many or loved by one? I have a friend, uh, John Irwin from the Irwin brothers, and they just made a film. Um, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, yeah, I can only imagine came out this weekend, it's supposed to make $2 million. It's a faith film. It's really good. Um, it has Dennis Quaid in it. It's supposed to make two, $2 million. It made $17 million. It's, it's only in 1,600 theaters. It was number three. Wow. This weekend. Yeah. That means the per square, uh, per, per screen average was more than the, the two films yeah. prior to, uh, that are ahead of them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's over $10,000 a screen. Yeah. That's extraordinary. Yeah. Um, and you're not reading about it anywhere, but no, you uh, won't. yeah, but it, it, since you were in passion, things have changed. You don't need Hollywood as much as, as you did. The system, um, you know, the, the, the truth is out there, um, and it's not going to go away. And, uh, you know, the, Ir the, uh, the, the Irwin guy, brothers? yeah, he yeah. came up one of the, I don't know which one, but anyway, John, he oh. did the Steve McQueen documentary. Did you see that American yeah. icon? Yeah, yeah. He handed it to me when I walked out and I went home and I watched it and here I mean, we can arguably say that, that Steve McQueen was one of the greats. Um, a physical actor, uh, a guy who uh, was absolutely the king of cool, um, but what was cool about him? He was hot about something. He was an orphan kid, essentially, and I watched this documentary. It just moved me to tears and that uh, even at the end, he was searching for something greater, and he said there was a recording of him that his wife gave out, and he said that he'd wished he had touched more people's lives. Uh, um, from uh, Jesus and Billy Graham was there at the end of his life and he uh, it, he was looking for his Bible as he was dying and uh, Billy Graham gave him his Bible who he was a great that just passed away and and yeah. without Billy Graham we would not have you know had the the reaction from America we needed his support and he gave it to us on the passion of the Christ what do you think about the the division uh between uh, our faith sometimes you know between you know the baptists and the catholics and the mormons and the protestants and everything else what do you how do we how do we solve that and come together on bigger issues well it's certainly not going to be uh beating you over the head i mean if god wanted to he certainly could beat us over the head yeah isn't he though what beating us over the head i think he is starting to beat us over the head well it can it eventually can come to that but right now the i mean there is a wrath or a justice that's mm. coming if we don't uh essentially um look i i really feel that the the ideal way would be love that he we we would just naturally turn to him and that i got that at a young age um but uh the uh we have an opportunity right now to decide where we want to go. As far as, you know, our all feeling, I do believe there is one truth and we'll know that mm. one day in heaven. If there were many uh, truths, there would not be a truth and there would be much divisions in heaven. What there is probably the, the, the right way, but um, I look at Jesus and he did not beat people over the head with you know either t uh, turn or burn now that is out there mm -hmm. but it's um wh what i find is that you have the truth years ago that would all it would be given to us just just truth and then essentially that would become fire and brimstone and now it's like all grace you know all love and forgiveness and everything but then that becomes sentimental hogwash our lord is both truth and grace are you happy? Yes. <laughs> when I when I came in here, I was a little frustrated. <laughs> but generally, yes, because I know that I'm, you know, I I have a future forever with Jesus, you know, in heaven. And I tell I tell people that you know, I do believe, and I do believe it's worth dying for, and I know I'm going to die someday. Um, and I, I tell people that because, you know, I tell people, yes, our Lord loves you, but I, I don't always feel that it's, it, it is hard, but it, you know, come hell or high water, you do the right thing. 
no matter what, you just try to keep yeah, doing. I want to I want to talk to you a little bit about that because <laughs> yeah, because doing the hard thing or doing the right thing is really hard. And you're a guy who has actually walked that walk. You've really walked that walk. Hey, you know, you know Marcus Latrell. That was yeah. the last event we were at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marcus uh, reached out to me because I put in a, a movie, The Count of Monte Cristo. God will give me justice, and yeah. he wrote that on the cave wall. Yeah, and then. Uh, he we became close and he uh i was the last time i was with him i was with him and chris kyle oh. and i never saw him again obviously that yeah. night we went on a great night and we and they want to just talk about that but how many soldiers that come up to me in the airports uh and you know uh, special forces guys just ask me about jesus that i said do you really believe in that i mean this you, i heard you suffer i heard you you know, were struck by lightning and had open heart surgery that they, that, that you went through horrible pains. Do you really believe in that stuff? And why are they asking me that? And then eventually they talk about, you know, I've had to take somebody's life uh, yeah. by my own hand Yeah. and what that's like. And is there a place in heaven for me? You know, almost like daring God. It reminds me of Gary Sinise in Forrest Gump when he's up at the top of that tower and says, yeah. all right, God, it's you and me. Yeah. And I just love to, I, yeah. ad, I identify with them. Yeah. That, that, that uh, there are people out there that will, will suffer whatever it takes because they feel a brotherhood and I feel that brotherhood with our Lord and I want to let them know that they're loved. I'm back with Jim Caviezel here in just a second. He's got a new movie out. Uh, called uh, Paul, Apostle of Christ. It is in theaters Friday, the 23rd. That's this Friday. You can find out more about it at paulmovie.com. Twitter handle at paulmovie. Jim Caviezel, when we return. Glenn Beck. Jim Caviezel, uh, you might know him from many, uh, many movies that he has been in. Most famously, obviously, he played Jesus in Passion of the Christ, but also Person of Interest, uh, the uh, People's Choice uh, Award, and, uh, and now in a new movie uh, called Paul, Apostle of Christ. And you play Luke. I do. Tell me about it. Well, it's the... the the film is right at the end of Paul's life, like the last two weeks, and he's in the Mamertine prison in Rome. And this is during the one of the biggest terror reigns of Christians, which was during Nero. And I basically uh, get into the prison and, um, and try to bring his message of hope to the Christian communities that are barely alive in that area. And of course, they're crucifying and burning them, um, using them as light fixtures uh, all over Rome. And um, I'm trying to give his message of hope, and he really doesn't have the message that they're looking for. They don't know what to do. And so really the film, uh, when I read it, I said, wow, this is now. Uh, this is just, we're all playing characters in Scripture right now. You know, often people, when they look at the Bible, they say, well, it's a piece of history. It's not the same as if, you know, if you were to go back, you know, we were just talking about Berlin, you know, mm -hmm. or Germany. And that's a history, you try mm -hmm. to learn from history, but this is something quite uh, extraordinary when you read scripture because it it, perme it goes permeates your brain into your heart and uh, um, bypasses it and goes into that. It's really, and we're all playing a different character, you know. Mm -hmm. I got to play Jesus in the Passion, but some of us, you know, get to play Judas and some play are the Pharisees and some are Herod. And that's playing out right now. The Pharisees, I mean, the real problem there was the hypocrisy. And there's where a lot of us are Pharisees right now. Yes. And there are Judases out there too. Amongst you've, the you've, um, you've taken quite a hit your whole career. How, what gets you through? What do you, I mean, your low points, you know, you've had, you, you are a great actor and because of what you believe they you're not uh you're not asked to be in all of the all of the great films mm -hmm. how do you get through that 
I get through it because I was in the greatest film there ever was. <laughs> you know, look, the I uh, I almost never uh, became an actor. I almost never did the Passion of the Christ. I almost never married my wife Carrie. I almost never adopted my three children. Um, both, all three of them uh, had two had tumors. One had the cancer, sarcoma. And uh, I thought, well, I'm not the kind of guy that can adopt. You know, I'm just not, I'm too selfish. That would have been the worst mistake of my life if I had almost not done those things. The path of Christ is hard. It is the road less traveled. Yeah. Uh, it is, but it is one that is beyond I ever anything I've ever experienced. And um, I know it's the way for me. I know, yeah, sure, I've pouted and played the victim, but I realize that, yeah, it's not really going to get it done. Um, victim is not a strong, strong position. Jim Caviezel, the name of the movie is Paul, Apostle of Christ. It is in theaters this Friday. Don't miss it. Glenn Beck, Mercury. Welcome to the program. We're glad you're here. Jim Caviezel is here. Pat Gray has just uh, joined us from the uh, Pat Gray Radio Roundup or whatever it is. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, that's exactly what it is. Whatever it's, it's called. Gray Radio Roundup. Uh, it happens after this program. Pat, Jim Caviezel, Jim, Pat. Jim. We've met actually before. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. But, but I just but I wanted to make sure that yeah. <laughs> I was being a gracious host here. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Good to see you again, though. Good to see you too. Pat. So, so Jim is here because um, he's uh, in a new movie, Paul, Apostle of Christ. And, you know, Jim, I was um, uh, I, I love I love the story of Paul. Um, but the thing that sticks in my mind in Paul's life, um, well, there's many things. Uh, but but when he's on the wrong side, you know, at the uh, at the death of James, he's he's mentioned just hold. Give me your coat. Go get, kill him. Oh, Stephen. Or Stephen. Yeah, thank you. Um, he's 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 standing there and he's listening to Stephen and he's help riling up the crowd. And he doesn't do any of the beating himself, beating him to death. He mm -hmm. just says, "Give me your, give me your, give me your, give me your cloak. I'll hold it for you." Yeah, essentially, <laughs> handing probably taking their cloaks and handing them stones and have at him. Yeah, and just just I mean, it's real evil manipulation i mean yeah. where he was the guy kind of behind the crowd yeah but i think that when stephen called out you know i see the son of man repeating the words of of jesus i see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the father coming in the clouds of heaven that reflection in his eyes he probably saw our lord right there and probably was the beginning of the end of saul how difficult would it be for you if you knew that Saul was coming your way and uh and uh you were told uh you know Jim I need you to go give him a blessing real quick how difficult would that be for you I think that would have been terrifying well of course but you know I I look at the what just the some of the videos and pictures that I saw from what ISIS did to Christians last year um, during um, Good Friday where they literally executed them by crucifixion and I I think the modern day Christians really have to understand that you know we're all gonna die someday and um, you know being in heaven 
I want to, I'd rather be known as someone who did something for Jesus than spending eternity without doing much uh, for him. And Do you spend any time in the Middle East recently? I, yes, I did shoot a movie out there, The Stoning of Sariah M., and uh, that really exposed uh, Sharia law. And uh, um, and it's it just extraordinary what, what um, happens to women uh, there. Yeah. And I played a guy named Freyadim Saranjam, who was a uh, guy who was just out there to write a story uh, about the Hayatollah takeover of the Shah. And was a, there was a peaceful movement and whatnot. And, and uh, out of this comes this uh, woman's story of um, being uh, stoned to death and that the stoning still take place. Um, so it was a... a I, I don't feel we had a lot of help from uh, many of the groups here, um, you know, many of the women groups that weren't there to to help their. I will tell you that it's it's been encouraging to us. We've yeah. raised probably thirty million dollars now, yeah, uh, to get some of these Christians out. We've we've taken seven thousand out of the Middle East. Uh, we're rescuing uh, that's great slaves and yeah. and and it's remarkable yeah. that there is a there. While it's not talked about, there is this, this I don't know, underground, would you call it, Pat? This kind of mm -hmm. this, this, something that's not on the surface and nobody's talking about, but there is real concern for that and, and real, the p people really helping. Good. Uh, a lot of people are helping, but they're doing it in, uh, in, uh, in the, uh, in quiet ways or yeah. working in a, like you say, the yeah. underground. Yeah, the um, the Christians are uh, unlike anything I've ever met. Chaldeans, Christians, Syrians, extraordinary. They're, I mean, yeah. they're just they're they are they are not like anything I've ever met. They're committed. Yeah, you know they yeah. have to be, and and they are. They, you know what? I, I read a, a quote this weekend. I'd written down a long time ago, and I've forgotten all about it. They tend church, not attend church. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. they're tending every day. They're, they are there. They know what it is. It's not just a place they go to every Sunday. Yeah. And they take it seriously because it doesn't come easy for them like it does us. You know, when you have to fight for something and, and put your life on the line for something, I think that changes you inside a little bit. It makes you more, makes you more committed. And yeah, they, well, they definitely saying, are. Yeah. And we get so fat and lazy over here on everything mm -hmm. that we don't know. Yeah. We, it has no value. Has no value. It's a great line in the film where Paul says to live as Christ, to die as gain. You know, I'm sure many of those Chaldean Syrian Christians and Coptics um, believe in the same way. You know? Yeah. Is it true on another topic that that um, there's a Passion of the Christ sequel coming? Yes. And you are signed on for that? Yes. Yeah. Wow. As Jesus? Yes. Wow. Well, he'd have to be, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, well, I mean, you know, it's the next day. Now I've turned it's into been... John, so no. <laughs> surprise! I mean, you don't you don't really look that different. You work out and all that crap all the time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, That's overrated. For, fortunately, well, I have to because it, there's so much of the work that you do is involves stunt. So if you mm. don't. Uh, keep that up your especially on that i mean on that one you yeah. were i mean that one was pretty uh, you know that was, was pretty serious yeah struck by lightning yeah last shot of the movie very last shot mm. what, what 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 went through your i mean besides juice what yeah. went through your head <laughs> on that <laughs> i i i was i was scared you know I, I'm just but it wasn't my time you know it was it, I had physical problems, you know, with electrical uh, heart and everything like that after that. And I was on a lot of medication. So in 2009, I had my first heart surgery. And then 2014 wow. was my, was open heart uh, at Cleveland Clinic. And they saved my life. And it was because of that? It was yes. because of the... I mean, it was, it was a combination of mm. the, the uh, uh, lightning bolt um, and then, uh, then the, with the hypothermia. And then the the um, um, pneumonia 
Mm-hmm. Have you thought about suing Mel? I mean, just <laughs> taking it for everything that he's worth. He's worth a few bucks now. You might want to yeah. think about that. He's a really nice guy. I, I, he is, he is, he, you know, I don't know him at all, but uh, in meeting him, he's, he's really quite brilliant. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's a, he's a freak show. Yeah. 